Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles. Hello, welcome to the new episode of Binary Ninjas Tips and Tricks in Germany. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, how to get a bank account here. Uh, you, to have a bank account is one of the first things you need to do here uh, when, you, when you arrive. Uh, because uh, even from the basic stuff like getting a, a cell phone contract, uh, getting, a, a, get, getting a rent of an apartment, uh, the cable, uh, whatever you need a, a bank account. Even to receive your salary, uh, most of the companies uh, use what they call a direct transfer or direct deposit. So you need to have a bank account in order to get that deposit uh, directly to your to your bank instead of getting a, a check. Uh, so that's that's the first requirement that they ask you to, to have. In Germany, you can have a you can get a, a bank account for free. Uh, without paying any, any fees or anything. Um, if you want extra services such as online banking or such as uh, if you want your paper statement or if you want it by email or if you want to have different services, you can uh, different banks charge different fees. But for your basic bank, bank account, if you have your company uh, making the direct deposit to your bank, uh, you don't pay absolutely anything. It's part of the um, par part of the rights that you have as a as a as an employee or as a person working here in Germany. So uh, that that's very good. Uh, I found that uh, to be very good because in other countries, uh, I've seen that you have to pay if you don't have a minimum uh, amount of money in your in your account every month. You have to pay for. Uh, account management or something like that, so uh, that, that's a very good thing about this. There are, there are many banks in, in Germany and uh, you can see below in the, in, in the description of the video I will put a link to the Wikipedia uh, website uh, where you can see the, the whole list, there are hundreds of banks in Germany. But what I want to discuss with you is that there are two main types of banks here. The, what I will call normal banks, like the ones that you know in the US or uh, in Mexico, for example, and the ones that are called uh, a Sparkasse, that means savings uh, savings bank, or sa savings, uh, yeah, sir, sa savings bank. So, um, ironically, the savings banks, I found them to be more expensive in, in different ways. So, for example, they charge more fees. If you want to withdraw money from, from a different uh, ATM that is not from your bank, uh, they may charge you for uh, managing your account or uh, for different services. So, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with the uh, Sparkasse because uh, my German friends recommend me to walk away from them. It's just for for specific purposes, if you want to really start a, a long-term uh, savings, uh, that, that's a good thing with the with the Sparkasse. Or if you want to, uh, for example, to start a fund for your kids' education or stuff like that. So it's not like you can use it as a daily account and to get your salary there and everything, but it's not recommended. Uh, but what I, it's what I heard from, from Germans. Uh, on the other hand, there are the normal banks, and these can be both uh, either local, uh, meaning German banks, or uh, international banks such as HSBC or uh, BB, BBB, uh, the Bank of Bilbao, Biscaya from, from Spain or Santander, or uh, from many other countries. So. Um, the ones that I can put as an example are the ones that I that I got here. Uh, I got a, a two bank accounts, one in Commerzbank and one in Deutsche Bank. And <coughs> I can tell you that both are different. Both, uh, each one has its own strength. So uh, that, that, that's why I, I got both. I, I didn't know uh, what to expect from a German bank account. Uh, I basically got them for their online services. I, I like the online services in these two, uh, these two banks. So, um, 
that, that they are good in that regard. For, for most Germans, it's weird that I have two bank accounts when I tell them that, because they normally have only one bank account, they receive their money there, and uh, they pay everything out of there. Uh, for me, it was a weird, little bit weird and a culture shock uh, there, because uh, let me explain to you a little bit how they work here. Uh, for example, to for your monthly <coughs> bills, the, the telephone bill, the, the cable, the, your cell phone, uh, even the rent, uh, most of the companies and most of the services require you to uh, give them uh, permission to access your account. So, for example, uh, Deutsche Telekom, it will deduct 50 euros every month for your cell phone. And, uh, I didn't really feel comfortable with that. Uh, I don't know if it's because I come from other places or not, but I don't feel comfortable of giving access to companies to my bank account where my salary comes. So what I do is that I have one bank account to receive my salary and the other one bank account uh, to, to pay everything. So every month I transfer the exact amount of the bills that I need to pay a month uh, to that other bank, bank account, and if for some reason they are overcharging me or, uh, or something, I can just stop putting money in that account, and they can uh, they cannot do anything about it. So uh, that's why I have two bank accounts. But that's a really personal preference, and it's kind of a control freak, and I don't like to give out the control of my money to. to third party, so that's, that's the main reason I have two bank accounts. Um, basically, the, these two, I will talk about the strengths. Uh, these two, uh, they, they both have very good uh, online banking system. Uh, both, you can set it up in English, so also it's, it's a good thing if you are still not very fluent in German and you don't know the banking terms or whatever. Uh, you can see all your transfers and everything in English. Um, what they differ in is the <coughs> the authentication process. Uh, m maybe people from Mexico will be familiar with this. Uh, Americans probably not. Uh, I didn't see so many things in, in the U.S. regarding authentication and tokens and stuff. But for example, here uh, you have your username, your password. But if you want to do a transaction, uh, they have something called TAN, or Transaction Authentication Number. And there are multiple ways that they can do this. Um, the most basic one is to receive a paper in your mail. And that paper has a cross-reference of columns and lines. And uh, every time you need to do a transaction, it asks you, for example, A3. So you have to go to column A, uh, line 3, and see that number and use it. But the thing is that after you use each number, it, it, it's only one. You can use it only once. So when you run out of numbers from your paper, <coughs> you have to call the bank or to go to the, to the branch and request another one. But you are in Germany and it's not so easy as just tell them, hey, give me another paper and they give it to you immediately. It would be too easy for Germany, right? So uh, what you need to do is to request it and wait uh, two or three weeks. Most of the time it's three weeks for it to come in your mail. So I consider that absolutely ridiculous and I don't really know what they do that. Probably it's because their idea of security or something, but I don't like that. <coughs> So that, that method, I consider it archaic and old and uh, old school and I feel like I'm here 10 years ago instead of present. So uh, that's the first one and uh, the worst. Uh, both, uh, both of them, Commerzbank and Deutsche Bank, have that, uh, that method. Uh, I guess it's for 70 year old ladies or something because I, I don't like it. Um, the um, Commerzbank has a very good one, it's called Phototan. Uh, you just download an app uh, in your cell phone. Uh, I, I, you will see here a, a screenshot or, uh, or some footage of my, of my app. Um, as you can see, it's, it's just an app. You synchronize it. Uh, there is a trick also. Uh, again, you're in Germany and it's not so easy. 
you have to request this photo tag and they will send you a paper in the mail and that paper you need to scan it with your cell phone it's a, a 2D uh, barcode or whatever it's called it's like a, a matrix of color dots and you scan it to register uh, your cell phone so uh, don't you dare format your cell phone or you lose it or you change cell phone because you have to do the process all over again go to your bank, request another paper, wait for it two, three weeks, and then do the registration. So, uh, but once it's working, it works perfectly. So, for example, you try, you want to do a transaction, you enter everything, all the information in your website, and it will ask you for the TAN. You choose the photo TAN method, and it will show you the graphic in the screen. And then, <coughs> here you can see an example of a a photo tag and uh, you scan that with your cell phone and immediately it gives you a number it's, I think it's eight digits number and you enter that and that way you authenticate that you are really the person doing the transaction so uh, that's pretty neat uh, from, from Commerzbank uh, and I like it uh, that doesn't expire as long as you don't format your phone or uh, lose it so uh, that's pretty good and um, Deutsche Bank has also another type of uh, tab. It's SMS, it's a simple SMS message. So uh, I, I prefer that over the paper thing. So whenever you want to request a transaction, it sends you a, a text message. It works pretty good, it, it, it's immediate, the, the text message that it arrives with the code. You enter it and you're done. So. Uh, that, that's it. So another, um, there are some other differences. For example, between U.S. and uh, Germany regarding debit uh, accounts. Uh, for example, in Germany, if you buy something or even if you withdraw money from the from the Geld Automat or the, the ATM, um, the the money is not deducted immediately. It takes like two or three days to. to be able to see it online so uh, that's totally uh, I, I don't like it because I am used to the US that everything is real time even your credit card you swipe it and uh, you receive a text message or a, an email saying your card was just swiped in this place for this amount and uh, I think it's more secure to know so if you lose your card you can stop it immediately after someone tries to use it. So here, even credit cards, debit cards, everything takes two or three days to show up in your, your statement online. So that's something else to consider. Uh, <coughs> something also very different here in Germany are the uh, credit cards, uh, credits in general. Uh, Germans don't believe in credit, actually. So they, they believe in uh, saving, if you want to buy something expensive to save for a long time, go to the shop and pay uh, immediately and don't owe anything to anyone. So uh, there are few exceptions, there, there are some stores that sell you stuff for uh, to pay over a number of months without charging interest. Some of them uh, have the option to pay over a number of months paying interest. Uh, but it's not so common, so it's not like com as common as in the US or Mexico that you get your credit card for everything and you can pay over 12 months or whatever. Uh, here it's not that way, you have to save your money and buy stuff, uh, like old fashioned way. Also, uh, the car credit cards are a joke in Germany. Uh, for example, the credit cards that I'm used to the day it cuts every month, you have at least 20 days to pay it in full or at least to pay the minimum that it's a percentage of the amount that you owe and the rest you can pay it uh, paying interest obviously. Or if you have a deal of paying over several months or whatever. Here the day it cuts, uh, after two or three days, they deduct from your debit account the full amount of money that you owe to the debit. So it's a kind of credit, but a very short-term credit. They don't like, they, they don't feel comfortable with you owning money to them, owing money to them. So 
um, that that's something complicated. Uh, for example, in most of the shops they don't accept credit cards, and if the, if some of them that they accepted, they even charge you like for five percent more, and they really are charging you the amount of money that the that the bank charges them to be yeah, able to charge you with a credit card. So uh, here you will be using more uh, cash or uh, debit cards. Uh, here they call it Etsy or EC card or Etsy card. Uh, these are the standard uh, debit cards and if you open an account here you will have your Etsy card and these are accepted pretty much everywhere. Uh, but still, there are some places that are, that only accept cash. So, uh, also a, a bank that I would like to mention is uh, Targo Bank. Uh, I don't have a personal experience with it, but I have a German friend who is very happy with it. And uh, for what he tells me, uh, Targo Bank has many of the features that uh, that I was looking for in a bank when I first got here from the U.S. For example, he tells me that they actually send him a text message if he swipes his card or if he uses his Etsy card in, in, a, in a supermarket or whatever. So that was a feature I was looking for, but I didn't know at the time. And I'm really lazy to change bank accounts now because, as I told you, you give permission to everyone to take money from your account and I receive my salary in the other one. It's a whole deal to switch your bank account. So uh, Targo Bank is a good deal. Uh, he gets his credit card for free, he told me. Uh, and I think he he told me that you can agree in the, when you are opening the credit card uh, contract, you can agree you want to pay over 30 days or over 60 or whatever, but uh, with different uh, percentage of interest. So. Um, I didn't know that you could negotiate with each bank uh, all these things. Uh, I'm not used to that. I'm used to banks having their own uh, products, uh, as they call them, to different people and uh, sorry for different profiles. And you just choose the, the one that fits best for you. But here in Germany, you can negotiate with them. Um, they also have something called Shufa. It's something kind of like a credit bureau or. Uh, or uh, Great score like in the US and uh, these Shufa companies uh, across Europe so you will see it a lot uh, if you want to open a, an account or whatever or a credit they will ask you if you give them permission to check your Shufa so for me it's been kind of a ethereal thing I, I don't know what's my score or whatever but uh, it's not so uh, so important like in the US because in the US you base you, you the credit is very important for everything even to rent an apartment uh, here as it's not so important uh, uh, it is uh, just keep a good credit and now an, another thing that I would like to um, show you is uh, I've seen forums and uh, from questions from expats here uh, how to transfer money to their own to their home countries? Uh, I have tried two different methods. Uh, yeah, well, two different methods and different uh, providers. Uh, one method has been uh, a normal wire transfer from bank to bank. I can tell you that's not the way to do it. Uh, I can tell you three methods actually. Uh, the the to go to the bank. It's the worst thing you can do, even if they have some kind of agreement with a Mexican or an American bank or whatever. It's always more expensive than any other option that I have seen. So yeah, please don't do that. Uh, you are just feeding the banks that are already rich. So uh, that's that's not a very good option. The cheapest that I got was like they charged me like forty. US dollars to transfer and also the exchange rate from euro to US dollars or for to Mexican pesos it's very it's very bad they, they take advantage so I don't recommend that one uh, the second method I tried was with PayPal it's pretty reliable uh, it's like uh, you can put money in your PayPal and uh, you have registered uh, one 
one Mexican account or American account and also your German one, you can put it there. It has an advantage, you can pay with credit card, so you are transferring money and it's actually virtual money you, that you don't really have at the moment. So for an emergency it's a, a good option. And the third option is to use a third party uh, website. Uh, I have personally used two of them. Uh, I have been recommending a lot uh, TransferWise because it's the one that I have been able to use to transfer money from here to the USA. But I just recently learned that uh, you cannot transfer to Mexico yet, for example. So you need to check which countries are uh, available for the service. Uh, not, not all of them are, are available yet. So um, that, that's, uh, uh, that's one, TransferWise.com. Uh, it's a, a it's a company based in, in England. And actually, it was created by the same founders of uh, PayPal. So it's safe. I, I can tell you that. I can uh, vouch for it. Uh, I have used it uh, three or four times to transfer uh, euros to US dollars. And it's very reliable, uh, very quick. Uh, and once uh, they, they took longer than two days, and uh, they uh, refunded me the, the fee that they charge and they were very uh, they, they were very hurt because they couldn't uh, fulfill their, uh, their uh, my expectations so they gave me some free future transfers so it's it's good customer service they are on top of, of it you get uh, you get an email uh, with information on each step uh, of the process until you have the money at the other bank. So uh, that's very well. Uh, the other service that I have been that I, I've been using since I was in the U.S. and I have uh, been sending uh, money to Mexico, it's uh, Zoom.com. It's X O M dot com. With that one, I'm very sure that you can send money to Mexico. Uh, I have used it for that, uh, but. With that one, I couldn't send money from Germany to the USA, for example. Some kind of law that the USA has or something, uh, they, they don't allow so easily to transfer money from outside to the US. So that one helps a lot to transfer from any country to any country or from the US to other countries. But from any country to the US, it's not very good. So uh, that's the second one. Uh, I will put down all the links here in the description of the of the mail uh, of the video, sorry, and you can send me a mail or post comments uh, asking questions. Uh, I, I don't mind. I, I love help people. So that was the the other thing that I wanted to. Okay, guys. Well, that that's that's all for uh, for this week's episode. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, sorry, I didn't publish anything last week, but I have been busy with other projects and uh, work and stuff so um, uh, I promise that uh, that won't happen again or I will be late so uh, you can check a, a new video every Friday here uh, and please subscribe to my channel if you like it and if you want to uh, stay on top of the uh, latest videos as soon as I uh, upload them uh, if you have any suggestions of something that you would like to know about Germany, uh, please leave it in the comments. Uh, I, I welcome all ideas and if I know about the subject and I can help uh, more people, uh, I'm glad to do it. Uh, I love to do this uh, and to help out. So um, uh, please subscribe, like my video and share it, uh, share it in your uh, network. Uh, it can help more people, uh, I think. And also, uh, here is a link to uh, to the playlist of the other episodes. So if you want to watch previous episodes, uh, you can go to that playlist and, and I have all the, the previous episodes. So uh, thank you again for watching and have a great week. Ciao.